Leslie Mackerel easily has one of the best storylines in all of animation. From his decades long feud with his brother Norton to stopping multiple Chuma outbreaks, all whilst going on a journey of self discovery. Oh, and of course, having to put up with Clarence. Oh, those brutal words hurt my skin. And so, in today's video, I will be exploring the complete timeline of Leslie Mackerel, from his time spent in Kingdom Come all the way to his very last breath. Leslie Mackerel on the surface may appear to just be a regular well-built Australian man with a young son. However, this is far from the truth. You see, in Season 1 Episode 10, The Brutal Truth, it is revealed that Les and his brother Norton are actually from a planet called Kingdom Come. It was about 60 years ago, from my home, Kingdom Come. In fact, both Les and Norton were competing so hard with each other to become king that they practically tried to kill one another in order to gain the throne. It started off to be a pretty good night until Norton decided to spike my drink to sabotage my chances of becoming king. Although, I had the same idea. And as a result of their misdeeds, their father banished them to float into space forever. Next thing I knew, father was standing over me and Norton passed out on the floor. He then showed me and Norton what we did to the town, and father was fuming. Which only lasted for a short while, until the pair crashed down into Australia. And so, after Les had been on Earth for a number of years, one day a baby is delivered onto his doorstep. And just like any loving father would, Les ignores this baby, until he realises that he'll soon be raking in the government money if he takes him in. Then I thought of the child support money, and what I can use it on. So, I became a father. And during this time, Les also makes friends with the residents of Browntown, including Sassy the Sasquatch, Donnie, Wayno, Owley, and of course, Mike Nolan. My name's Mop. Mop? Les. Yeah, good to meet you, mate. Yeah, you too, mate. And all of these connections will definitely come in handy down the timeline. And so, if you're enjoying the content, please make sure to click the like button and subscribe to the Harry from Ends channel, as it massively helps out the channel, as well as letting myself and YouTube know that you're enjoying my videos. Okay, a massive thank you, and now back to the timeline. If you're a keen observer of the Big Lex universe, you'll have noticed that in episode 4 of the Mike Nolan show, Ding Dong Deli, a prequel to the Big Lex show, the entirety of Brown Town knows about the forthcoming Chuma Island. That is, apart from Les, as at this point in the timeline, he's still inside the box, and is unaware of his reason for being. However, despite this, during the first Chuma Island, we still see an immense amount of bravery from Les, as he easily slays an army of Chumas before confronting Bumble Brutus, one of the commanding Chumas. Guess what happens to bees when they sting something? What? They die. And after all of the chaos of Chuma Island 1, Les vows to return back to his home planet of Kingdom Come with even greater force. Well, that is, if he can find his spaceship. You wanna know what I've been spending your money on? This. It's over there, mate. This. Of course, it wouldn't be a timeline of an Australian cartoon legend without at least some of the timeline being spent on the pokies. As this is a real fact, over 80% of men in Australia have stated that they've gambled in the past year. However, unlike the crippling losses that most people face when they gamble, Les is able to win just about all the money in the world when he gambles with the last of his funds. Now do the $20 hit, man. That was all my money! And so, with his newfound millions of dollars, Les decides to invest in his spaceship, as well as starting a Glendall collection. And starting this Glendall collection would end up being a costly mistake that will come back to bite him down the timeline. Many people point to Chuma Island 2 when they talk about spirituality within the Big Les show. However, Les's first out of body experience comes from Season 3, Episode 4, Popcorn. Isn't it popcorn? Nah, mate. It's popcorn. I'm pretty sure it's popcorn. I've never heard of that word in my entire life, mate. 
as after Donnie gives Les and Sassy the wrong cookies, Les starts seriously tripping out to the point where his life is being prophesized and voices are telling him to go back to Truma Island. Don't you get it, big Les? You have to get out! And besides this being a beautifully animated scene, it also gives us a glimpse into how ultimately Les just wants peace, despite the chaotic and fragmented nature of everything around him. Les's Kundalini Awakening is absolutely the definitive point in the Big Les show where everything changes, as Les becomes aware that he is a creation, and that his life is constructed in Microsoft Paint. Have you ever heard of Paint? No. Microsoft Paint, man. Well, that's where you're from. Wait, what? Right now you're outside the box, but you're also in the box at the same time? It's confusing, I know, but... Only you can make sense of it. And on top of this, Sassy tells Les that now that he's taken a step outside the box and realised that his life is a construct, Les can now shape his life in any way that he wants. Which, of course, Les does by putting out the energy that he wants to kill Norton. I just want him dead. I just, I just don't want to have that feeling of knowing that he's out there alive, walking around. I want that to stop. And I mean, talk about a twisting of the law of attraction. And this manifestation unfolds in real time, with Les finally being able to kill his brother Norton after all of these years of back and forth fighting and betrayals. <laughs> and so, after Norton is disposed of, there's only one natural ruler of Kingdom Come. Well, that is so we thought, as Les's father, King Larinox, refuses to rescind his power. Too weak to survive the fall. Too weak to handle the throne. And King Larinox even goes as far as working with the Glendall Corporation in order to siphon money away from Les. Something which, understandably, he's not too pleased with. And so, when Les and his father crash back down to Earth, Les kills his father with the crown of Kingdom Come, refusing to ever be king like him. However, Les's karmatic downfall follows soon thereafter, as the gun that he used to kill Norton in Truma Island 2 is now being used to take Les's life away. The old gooch gun trick, huh? And so, after this sequence, one question remains. Why didn't Les want to be king of Kingdom Come? After all, it's a dream that he had been chasing for practically his entire life. Well, to get that answer, we need to look to the future. During Truma Island 3, once Les is pushed out of the spaceship by Glenn from Glen World, he crash lands back down to Earth and is sent into the future where he sees Taipan Pete, a mysterious figure that Les spent much of Season 4 chasing the identity of. Hey, hold on a minute. Tell me who you are, mate. Who are you really? <sighs> we knew each other once. Or just... grew up. And this mysterious figure details to Les that if he were to become king of Kingdom Come, that all hell would break loose, and that he would be an even worse leader than his father, wreaking havoc and destruction everywhere he would go. And after delivering this information, Taipan Pete leaves Les with an ultimatum. Either sacrifice his life now for the betterment of his friends and family, or live as a tyrannic ruler who destroys the lives of all of those around him. And in the end, this choice is very easy for Les. That's beautiful, mate. During the Sassy the Sasquatch show, we learn that Les also has an alternate version of himself called Jez, who honestly seems to be at peace with everything he has in his life. There's no all-out war with his father, and Quentin is just a normal Australian boy worried about his grades. Very clever you are. Hey Dad, tell him to get in the footy. He wants me to join the football team. However, this doesn't mean that he doesn't remember the events that took place, as when Sassy shows up to his door, he instantly knows who he is. Hey mate, how you going? Don't know if you know me in this universe, but my name's, um... Sassy the Sasquatch. And honestly, I think Jared Wright made a brilliant choice by including this timeline, as both Sassy and the viewer are put to ease knowing that Les will always be his tremendous caring and funny self in every timeline. 
Oh, well, have fun on your date with, um, Quinnan's teacher. Yeah, there you go, Quinnan. You might get a new mummy. Oh, that's so weird. And with that, Les's timeline is complete. So please, let me know in the comments which character's timeline you'd like to see next. And also make sure to subscribe to the Harry from Ends channel as well as liking this video, as it only takes a second and helps massively. And as always, stay safe, stay happy, stay funny.